Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. Today's video is going to be a in-depth step-by-step on how I level, fill, and ice my cakes to get sharp buttercream edges. I'm going to be showing you a couple different ways to use the Profroster and I'm also going to be showing you just how to do it with a spatula and a bench scraper. So the first thing I have is my 8-inch cake here and I need to cut the top off to level it. Lots of people like to use cake levelers or rulers for this step. I will link a cake leveler below if you're not confident with freehanding this. I like to just keep my knife level and then using my turntable as a guide, I make a mark all the way around and once I'm confident, I cut all the way through. The next step is cutting my cake in half. I like a good cake to buttercream ratio. I don't like too much cake per buttercream, but it just comes down to personal preference how thick you'd like your layers. Again, I'm using a level knife and my turntable to mark all the way around my cake, and then I'm gonna cut that through. I had two eight inch cakes that I cut in half to make four layers, and I'm adding a little bit of simple syrup to each layer. I'm just spooning that on, but if you have a specific bottle, you could use that as well. Simple syrup is just a equal sugar to water ratio that you're boiling until the sugar dissolves. Simple syrup will not make your cake soggy. It just helps it to stay extra moist while you're working with it. To fill my cake, I'm using some vanilla Swiss meringue buttercream, and I'm also gonna add some raspberry puree. For each layer, I'm adding a dollop of buttercream, and I'm gonna spread that out, trying to keep it even using my small offset spatula. Since I'm adding a fruit filling, I need to add a dam to keep my filling from oozing out. So I'm piping on a thick band of buttercream all around the edge. I added a couple spoonfuls of my puree and then I'm just spreading that out, being careful not to add too much because if you do, your cake is going to bulge. As an extra step, I like to drag the buttercream down over the raspberry a bit, just for some extra security. I added my next layer of cake and then just repeated the process. Once my cake was stacked up, I added a thin layer of buttercream around the outside of the entire cake and that's just gonna lock in all of the crumbs so that none of them end up in my final ice and make it look lumpy. At this point, the cake is gonna go into the fridge for about 25 to 30 minutes to chill, and when you can touch your finger to the buttercream and none of it comes off, it's ready for the final ice. All of those steps up until now would be the same if you were using the Pro Froster or the spatula bench scraper method. So the first way I'm going to show you is if you are decorating a cake on the cake board that you're going to be serving it on. I've got my Pro Froster ready and I'm just adjusting the height so that it's not touching the top of the cake, but there's not a ton of room there. This is going to be by your personal preference of how thick you want your icing. I don't want a ton of icing on the outside because this is gonna have fondant on it, so I'm going for a thinner layer. I'm adding buttercream to the top of my cake and using my spatula to smooth that out and then I'm adding a thicker layer of buttercream all around the sides of my cake as well. Once the whole thing is covered, I'm taking my Pro Froster and making sure the base is flat on my cake board, and then I'm pressing that ever so slightly against my cake, and I'm gonna start scraping. You want to be really careful with how much pressure you're using here because if you go too deep into the buttercream, you're just going to scrape it all the way right down to the crumb coat. Once a bit of that buttercream builds up on my Pro Froster, I'm just taking it away and scraping that off and just cleaning it up a bit and then I'm going back in. Once you've gone around a couple times, you're gonna notice the spots where you don't have enough buttercream, you have holes or patches missing. So I just fill those in with my spatula and then go over the cake again. You're gonna notice that there's a divot in the middle of the top of the cake. That's pretty normal. I couldn't really find a way to avoid that. It's not a big deal because you can just smooth that out at the end. Mm -hmm. 
The finish on your cake really just depends on how much you finagle it, how finicky you are. You want to keep adding the buttercream in the patches you're missing, scraping it back, adding more buttercream, scraping it back. Eventually, you can end up with a really smooth level cake. Once I was happy with it, I just added a little more buttercream to the top to fill in that hole and smoothed it out with my spatula. Another really handy way to use the Profroster is to use the cake board itself as a guide. So I have a six inch board sitting on top of a larger board and I've just taped that down using double sided tape so it's not gonna slip around on me. And I have a six inch cake that I filled the exact same way I did my first cake. Before I add my crumb coat, I wanna have more of a gap between my cake and the board. So I'm just carving away the edges ever so slightly. I used my bench scraper just as a guide to make sure that as I went all the way around, the cake wasn't gonna to touch it in any spots. At this point, I added my crumb coat and threw that in the fridge for 30 minutes to chill, just like my first cake. I added my buttercream to the top and enough on the sides to fill the gap between the cake and the board. And then I'm using my Profroster and putting the base right up against that six inch bottom. This method is really handy because the board acts as a guide and it's doing most of the work of determining how thick your icing is gonna be all the way around. You don't really have to worry about how much pressure you're using because you can't dig in any further than the board. So you're gonna have a nice even layer of buttercream all the way around your cake. I did find that it was a little bit trickier to use the Profroster for a smaller cake. It was digging in a little more than it did for the larger one, so the middle gap was a lot bigger. Once I was happy with the sides, I just filled in the top with my little spatula until it was smooth. The last method is the one that you have seen me use with all of my cakes up until this point. I did not have a Profroster, so I used my spatula and my bench scraper, and you can get some pretty great results with it. So if you don't have a Profroster, this is the method for you. With my larger spatula, I'm adding buttercream to the sides of my cake and then I'm grabbing my bench scraper and I'm gonna start going around, just scraping back the buttercream little bits at a time. You don't wanna take too much off. And I'm making sure that my bench scraper is straight up and down. I don't want the top to be digging into the buttercream more than the bottom because then my sides are gonna be crooked. Once I was happy with that, for all the buttercream that accumulated on the top edge of my cake, I'm going to drag that into the center using my bench scraper, just being careful to keep it level so I'm not messing up my nice flat top. At this point, I usually pop my cake into the fridge for just like 10 minutes, not so it's totally chilled, but just so the buttercream firms up a bit. And then I go around the whole thing one more time with my bench scraper, and I find that this step really smooths it out. Once I was all finished, this was one of the Profroster cakes. This is the six inch cake. And then this was the cake that I just used the spatula and bench scraper. These are the finished cakes side by side. I was really impressed with the Profroster. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I have been told that it's harder to use buttercream than it is to use ganache. I'm not really sure if that's true or not. I will find out in the future. But I think it was really great. It cuts the time down a lot, especially using that board at the bottom. It really does give you perfectly round top and the sides were nice and like straight up and down. They weren't crooked at all. It was really handy. The uh, spatula and bench scraper cake was like old reliable to me. It's what I'm used to. I can whip it out pretty fast now. So if you're not interested in the Profroster at all, it's still a really easy method to get a clean looking cake. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. I'm gonna have everything I used listed down below, including the recipes. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next one.